Tonight's winner goes to the Cotton Bowl. For the first time since 1943, Texas plays Texas A&M for the conference championship at a game in this stadium on New Year's Day against Auburn. Exciting moments for coaches Jackie Sherrill and Fred Akers. Texas last week knocked Baylor out of the Cotton Bowl, helped by the best performance of the year by huge tailback Edwin Simmons. And the Longhorns defense rose up and stopped Baylor late in the game, averting a tie and a possible Baylor win and trip to the Cotton Bowl. Afterwards, Fred Akers' team knew a win tonight over the Aggies means Cotton Bowl. But the Aggies are loaded offensively and defensively. Number one in the Southwest Conference on offense, number one in the Southwest Conference on defense. But place kicker Eric Franklin has been erratic, yet his 48-yarder against SMU won the game and kept Texas a and in the conference race. And it'll all be decided tonight, partly as a result of this kick. Against Arkansas, quarterback Kevin Murray showed his poise and talent as the Aggies posted their second Southwest Conference upset in as many weeks. And Arkansas learned why the Aggies are the conference's best team on defense. Jackie Sherrill Jung team is in the race, which will be decided tonight. Who will join the 1986 Cotton Club? Who will go to the Cotton Bowl? CFA football, happy Thanksgiving edition from Kyle Field, College Station, Texas. The Longhorns and the Aggies. Make no mistake about it, the Cotton Bowl is at stake. The loser will go to the Blue Bonnet Bowl, but this crowd is here not for the Cotton Bowl. This was sold out a long time ago because whenever the Aggies and the Longhorns mix it up, it is a cause for a big crowd and high emotion. More than 4,000, more than capacity, are scheduled to be in Kyle Field tonight. And why not? Added the conference leaders, Texas A&M, 6-1. Texas, 6-1. Baylor knocked off by Texas last week, out of it. Arkansas knocked off by Texas A&M two weeks ago, out of it. Winner tonight, it is the Cotton Bowl. But more than that, the bragging rights, not only for this year, but for years to come in the state of Texas. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. I am Jim Simpson, the man to my left, having enjoyed turkey with us all this afternoon. We're not going to see a turkey tonight, I guarantee you. But I also know you, Paul McGuire, whenever you talk about a natural rivalry such as this, you take those statistics and all of those statements and tear them up and throw them over your left shoulder. Jim, you forget about everything that's happened. You forget about the Cotton Bowl because once this game starts, they're not thinking about that anymore. You talk about recruiting, the things that are going to happen to these two teams, Texas A&M, it's been a long time, man, since they've been thinking about Cotton Bowl. But when you have all the stats, I don't care what the quarterbacks have done, I don't care about all the great backs and how good the defense is and the offense is, when these two teams kick off, throw it all out the door and grab your socks. <laughs> this is the first time since 1943 that these two teams have met head-on with the Cotton Bowl, with the conference title at stake. And it would be if the Aggies win the first time since 1977 since they have gone. We'll come back in just a moment with a look at both Texas and Texas A&M. But right now you're looking at Bevo, Hook'em Horns. That's what they're saying from up Austin Way and around the state of Texas and across this world. And on the other side, of course, it's Gig'em. But for Texas, they won 17 conference championships, 31 bowl games, 18 cotton bowls. They're hoping for 19 and two national titles. Tradition, Texas has. And more about the Longhorns when they come back to Kyle Field. Where you going, it's Michelob. There's a style in your life. Hi. Mm, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> hey, how did the doors turn out? Oh, right. <laughs> no other beer is brewed and aged like exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you going, it's Woody, here's your expense money. And bring back a heavy hitter. On your way to another town. You can't spend a lot, but you know how to get around. Avis makes it easy, easy on the traveler, yeah. Avis tries harder. Our super value rates give you more for less. Bush leads, college town, sand lots, make the Keep rounds. Ryan number two. Uh, Avis makes it easy, easy on the traveler, yeah. Woody, the kid's great. Who tipped you off? His mother. Avis, so easy. The human hand 
It's not flat, it's curved. And now, finally, there's a glove built around it. Finally, from Wells Lamont, grips. The only all-purpose leather glove with a patented pre-curved design for a comfortable grip that just won't give. Grips from Wells Lamont. Look for Wells Lamont gloves at the sign of the mule. Setting off to find America Gonna take my own sweet time to find America Kodakolor VR Films, capturing America in all its glorious colors. And everywhere I see people smiling back at me So glad to be in America Kodak Film, because time goes by. There's Cotton all over College Station and back in Austin, Texas, too. They've been waiting for this game tonight, as they always do. And as for the Longhorns, they're ready. Coach Fred Akers' Texas team was not picked to do this well in the Southwest Conference race. But here they are, tied for the lead, tonight with a 50-50 chance for the championship and the Cotton Bowl. But about the Aggies, Coach Fred Akers is respectful. Well, they're good. They're, they're talented physically. They're a balanced football team. They, they throw the ball well. They run the ball well. They're a big power back type of offense, and uh, their quarterback is, is not making many mistakes at all. He's getting the ball into the places where it's supposed to be, and that balance always concerns you because you can't zero in on one thing. He's got a combo. The Longhorn players also have respect for the Aggies. Yeah, they're a lot like Baylor in the, in the passing attack, but uh, I think they've got a lot better running game. Uh, uh, Roger Vick's a good running back. Murray does a good job uh, audible and calling off, you know, and uh, they are. They're real balanced and uh, got a big offensive line, and they run hard. It's going to be tough to stop them. We're going to have to have some balance ourselves, and uh, I don't think we can uh, do one thing. We're going to have to run. We're going to have to throw the ball well, too. Uh, they're very aggressive. They run a lot of uh, blitzes, especially with their secondary, trying to bring up the, the bad plays, and we're going to have to recognize it. Well, they're very good. We've known that all year. They've played some great games, and uh, we're just going to go out and try to be consistent with what we do, try not to turn the ball over too much, and uh, just go at them as best we can. Well, we have some things. They blitz a lot, and we're going to try to take, it adva take advantage of that a little bit and, uh, you know, just try to keep our poise in, in Kyle Field because that's a tough place to play. But, uh, you know, we're, we're getting ready for them, and I think it's going to be a great game. I believe we're going to have to just come off the ball. Last year, uh, they came down here and pretty much embarrassed us, and uh, we sat back and didn't come off the ball. I think that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to attack up front and uh, not sit back and wait on them. It is only 90 miles from Austin to College Station, Texas, but the teams and fans of these two schools are about 180 degrees apart. It is the big game in the big state of Texas. It is truly a big game, Paul McGuire, but in all of that, Texas was talking about Texas A&M, not about Texas, and the Longhorns have improved mightily over the last half dozen games. I think the man that's improved is Stafford, their quarterback, and what they have done with him, Jim, instead of having him drop back because he is so agile and he can run so very well, they're moving him in almost like a moving pocket to give him the option to throw the ball or to run the ball, and he does it well. You know, the last three games have not allowed a single touchdown pass. They've got a lot of statistics. Stafford has been throwing for 70% since he's become a starter. And here they are talking to us about Texas A&M. Make no mistake, the Longhorns are here and are here to play. The Aggies, on the other hand, have what is known as a 12th man, 12 non-scholarship people that go down on kickoffs only. Now, our question to them is, why would anybody want to be a 12th man player? You see this face? Who would care? Because I want to kill someone! Because my mom wanted me to. Because I'm a Terminator! It's a great way to meet women. Because I love to crack the head! Because we float down the field like butterflies and we sting like bees. Cold-blooded and crazy. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving from the Republic of Texas! Sports Illustrated wanted me to talk to you sports fans out there, and also to you people who love them. Christmas is coming, and if they're...
Uh, we have approximately confidence he has in his arm and the one thing that all good quarterbacks do is that's congratulate your offensive line and he loves them take him out to dinner <laughs> but what about the man that's running out of tailback now four knee operations a junior Edwin Simmons 234 pounds and they say he's right back where he was when he was recruited well those are the knees of Edwin Simmons now he's also six foot four which you left out <laughs> and, and, and the huge man I had a long talk with Edwin last year and they didn't know whether he could play or not he is now, after talking with Coach Akers about Edwin Simmons, as he is now starting to get back some of that form. He has lost some speed, but he realized, Jim, that now the knees are there, and if he gets hurt, there's nothing he can do about it. It's a mental thing when you hurt your knees. He's overcome that. Look out, Texas A&M. Well, with the Aggies, our favorite. You have a word? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, it, it's a three-point game. I tell you what, it is a great place to be Kyle Field on Thanksgiving night and remember the Cotton Bowl is at stake. Winner goes on January 1st against Auburn. We have them all wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving and saying in their own inimitable style of why they are the 12th man. <laughs> but remember, they're non-scholarship men. They carry their own numbers. And when we went to Texas Christian last week, that was their first road game of the year. They stay home because of non-scholarship. But they did go over to Fort Worth to play in that game. These are Longhorns. There's Fred Akers setting his team out. And we will say one more time what a game this is in the state of Texas, where football is king from high school all the way up. And if you're an Aggie, you're an Aggie. And if you're Longhorn, you're Longhorn. And never the twain shall meet except once a year on the football field. Jim, we're looking at the 12th man, and I had the opportunity yesterday to spend about 45 minutes with those guys. There's, there's some 25 of them. And they're a little stranger than fiction. <laughs> but they love what they do. I mean... They, they wouldn't have it any other way. They don't really want to play. They, and this, is, this is what they want to do. Just run down on kickoff. And let me explain one other thing. It is probably the toughest special teams that you can go down on because everybody's got to take a shot at you. You just sacrifice your body, and there they are. What they do is allow just about 13 yards per return, no more than that. Scott Slater will kick it off. Barefooted. Eric Metcalf, he's slightly injured. Number two back there. And back there with him is Kevin Nelson. And Slater will kick it off, and you'll have a chance to take a look at this 12 man team. They are very effective. All former high school players, so they've been in action before. This is not throwing men to the wall. And this will be Kevin Nelson after the short kick of the 10 yard line and Nelson gets a trip up the middle and out near the 30 yard line and Texas will start from about the 32. Longhorns with good field position will set out Brett Stafford 70 percent his statistics since taking over as the starter number 10 a junior out of Belden Texas 58 percent overall. His running backs, Charles Hunter, 26. Darren Nelson, 34, the fullback. Wide receivers, Everett Gay, 19. Russell Hayes, 14. Woody Maris, 95, the tight end. Houston, the starting at left tackle over, or rather, Erdl over Houston. He's hurt. Gatong, Chilton, Chester, and Stewart. That is Hayes in motion. And stood up is Charles Hunter. Hunter absolutely stood up and getting up is Sammy O'Brien. And one of the matchups is going to be O'Brien, the nose guard, against Gene Chilton, the 270-pound center of Texas. Sadler, 99, O'Brien, 90, Muller, 82, the front three, Roper, 83, Kelm, 65, Holland, 11, and Howard, 73, the linebackers. Austin, broken foot, number one on the left corner, Flowers, 15 on the right, Bryant, six, and Corrington, 10 are your safety second down and 10 they give the ball back and there goes Charles Hunter and Hunter's got the first down across the 45 yard line and Texas after being held on first down pick up 
a first down on second down. Jim, this is a great play to run against a team. It's so pumped up in the beginning of a football game. Now watch for the over-pursuing of the Texas A&M defense. Once they do that, then Hunter just cuts back in. There's no one on the backside to pick him up. It's good blocking in the line of scrimmage and a good run downfield first down. All at the 46-yard line. Uh-oh, a couple of backs are moving, and that is Hunter with the ball, and Hunter is dragged down across the way by number 73, Todd Howard. But both backs were moving, Norris and Hunter, so it'll be first and 15. Move it back five yards. Well, here we are, Paul. Thanksgiving night, College Station, Texas. Big game in Texas. The Cotton Bowl of Steak. The loser will go to the Blue Bonnet Bowl. And I'll give you 100 bucks if you can find an empty seat in this place. <laughs> it's crazy. I wouldn't be able to make it. While they're walking back, that gives us a chance to tell us that our referee tonight is Joe Thomas. Bill Anger, the umpire. Linesman is Don Brown. The line judge, Bob Baker. Ron Underwood, the field judge. The side judge is Lloyd Dale. And Phil Luckett is the back judge. Move the ball back to the 41-yard line. First down, 15, Texas. No score. We've just gone through the first minute and 10 seconds. Gay is wide to the left and Hayes to the right. And here's Hunter. He's getting every time, and he's got some more running room and running very well against that number one defense in the Southwest Conference, getting the five yards back. And Larry Kelm, the inside linebacker, number 65, made the stop. Jim, there's a super block of the right guard, Brian Chester, number 72. He just went back, moved to the outside, and trapped, and took his man, which is the linebacker on that side, out of the picture. If there is an advantage, and Texas does rate some advantages, it is in their good offensive line, of which four men are seniors. The others are juniors. And they give it a tailback again. Why? This up on a good thing, but O'Brien is down the bottom there, number 90. A lot of other folks will get up, but O'Brien will be the last to get up, and he's the man who made the stop. So it is third down and about eight to go. Here's the situation. Now, we talked about Brett Stafford as far as, as, as throwing the football, and what they're going to like to do to him now is roll him to the left and try to get to the outside and see if we can get a hold of Hayes or Gay, either one of the, the wide receivers. Hayes is wide to the left, and Gay is to the right. Third down and eight. Stafford has a big play capacity, but this time he's knocked down. Johnny Holland just voted day before yesterday. The Football Writers Association All-American linebacker made the stop. It is fourth and long Texas. So when Stafford, Jim, rolls to his left, and we told you that's what he's going to do, just watch the pursuit. It's going to be Johnny Holland from the backside, and I think that's Kelm up there in front, number 65. No, excuse me, that's Domingo Bryant up in front, number six, number six, who's a strong safety force. And Sta uh, Stafford didn't have a chance to throw the ball. John Telchik had six yards, averaging 48 yards per kick last week against Baylor and they got to take that into the end zone faking the catch and we'll come back out to the 20 yard line and we'll come back to Kyle Field no score the Aggies now have the football a lot of you are watching this commercial on a 19 inch TV nice but a little crowded some of you have a 25 inch set gives you a little more elbow room now this is Zenith's new 27 inch television the big picture with more picture from corner to corner plus an incredibly sharp even larger image Zenith advanced system 3 27 inch television a size you could get comfortable with the smart sets smarter than ever Welcome to Adventures in Insurance. Today, we're with a man who makes... Armor, high-fashion battle wear. You got insurance? Oh, yeah, I got a great policy from my independent insurance agent. Oh? Well, he's a real pro when it comes to insurance. And he knows my needs, too. I see. Is there much call for armor these days? Oh, sure. It protects you from meteors, gamma rays, hailstones. But there is a drawback. And what's that? Oh, you got to stay away from magnets. For great deals on insurance, call an independent agent who represents the Hartford. The CFA on ESPN is brought to you by a 
exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by Jeep Comanche, the new truck on the road, it's worth a look. Kevin Murray, number 14. The quarterback leading the Southwest Conference in offense, Keith Woodside, 33, scheduled to start. As one running back, Anthony Tony, 25, the others. We'll check them out for you. Shea Walker, 85. Jeff Nelson, number eight, is the man in motion. They're the wide receivers. And Murray's going to throw on first down. Has the time, one-on-one -on -one down the sidelines. And two men diving for the ball. Stephen Braggs was right there with Jeff Nelson. Now the interior line, Lewis Cheek, Randy Waddy, Matt Wilson, Randy Dawson, and Doug Williams, the good right tackle weighing 300 pounds. Defensively for Texas, McKinney, 87, Espinosa, 94, Reed, 98, Broner, 85, the front four, Allett, 48, Hager, 60, Dulabon, 39, the linebackers, Bragg, 6, Tillman, 11, the corners, Senegal, 5, and PB, 42, the safeties. Second down and 10, no score. Look at this setup in the backfield. They pitch back, and that is Anthony Tony with some running room and gets across the 25 to about the 26-yard line, where it'll be third down and four. Tackle made by Espinosa. Jim, on that first play from scrimmage when they ran Nelson downfield and he was covered by Braggs, they were both looking at the football and their feet got tangled up. And of course, this crowd here, I guess they're for Texas and what you say? And they wanted they wanted a penalty, and there was none. Make no mistake, not only is a Texas band here, Paul, but a bunch of Longhorn followers are here also. Third down and four to go. That is Nelson, the man in motion. Murray back to throw. Murray throws across the middle, and Nelson does hold on to it for the first down. He was hit by Chris Dulevan, the weak side linebacker, but held onto the ball just across the 30-yard line, and it is Nelson slow in getting up. That's his 45th catch to lead the conference but Dulabon really lowered the boom well when Nelson comes across Jim the ball hits him in the hands and he bobbled the ball as he goes back to get the ball that's when Chris Dulabon watches back here he is concentration on the ball knows he's going to get hit and he gets a helmet right right square in the middle of his back 10 44 to go first quarter the game at Kyle Field A&M and Longhorns no score <laughs> One could ever deny You're on your way to the top And along the way You've always known just who you are Where you're going you've always known it No other beer is brewed and aged Like exceptionally smooth Michelob Where you're going is Michelob We're not a company But we'll give you a chance to work Where there's always a challenge We'll give you opportunities to learn To develop to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career. A career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Kyle Field has been filled up and then added some more. About 4,000 more of the capacity. First down, Nelson came off the field under his own power. Tony carries the ball, and the stop is made there by the free safety Richard Peavy, number 42. Tony was doubtful whether or not he played tonight, although everybody plays in this game if they can suit up at all, because of just overall fatigue and bruises. He picked up four yards there, marked the ball at the 35, got it a second down and six. You have no bruises in a game like this, Jim. <laughs> you better had not have any bruises in a game like this. They don't matter. Oh, somebody went the wrong That's way. That's right, and Murray hangs on to the football, and the Longhorns hang on to him. That was Rocky Reed, number 98, and that's a loss back to the 33-yard line. And it's going to be third down and eight. You don't know whether the quarterback turned the wrong way or, or Anthony Tony went the wrong way. Now watch. Murray goes that way. Tony's coming this way. He's looking for Tony. Tony's going into this hole. But you see the tackle on that side. Cheeks, number 79, releasing. I think Tony should have gone the other way. One back offense. Two wide receivers. Very wide to the left. And Jeff Nelson has come back in and now goes in motion. As on third and eight, Murray fires the ball across the middle. And there's the catch by Jeff Nelson. And he's got another first down. Jim, let me just say something about this play. You want to talk about a gutsy call. 
You remember two plays or three plays ago, they sent Nelson across the middle, and he got his back hammered by Dulabon. Here he comes back across the middle again. He knows he's going to get hit, and he makes the catch. Shows me something about toughness right there. Ball at the 43-yard line. Nelson coming out wide to the left, getting single coverage out there from Tony Tillman, the cornerback. And here's the pitch. And here comes Anthony Tony. Gee, did he run over Peavy? Ran right over the free safety Peavy. And picks up yardage out to the 49 and a half yard line. It'll be second down and about three. You must be prepared to make a tackle. And when you see Richard Peavy come up, number 42, to hit Anthony Tony, watch what happens here. Here comes Peavy. Here comes Tony. Wang. He just says goodbye to you. Thank you. Second down and short from near midfield. No score, first quarter. The Aggies have the football, and they give it to Tony, and he's got the first down inside the 45-yard line. Aggies moving the ball on the ground. They're the number one team in total offense in the Southwest Conference. Jim, I don't know if that was Dulabon, number 39. It comes right up the middle and misses right there. And then you see Anthony Tony pick up the first down. It was Dulabon in the backfield. Missed the tackle. Nelson wide to the right. Again, they overload the right side. Stacking two wide receivers and putting another wide right. And they give the ball to Tony again. And the flag goes down as Tony gets to the 41-yard line. Jim, what they're doing in that formation, they're putting the, the, the flanker out, but up on the line of scrimmage. They're taking the tight end off the line of scrimmage in a slot position and they're putting the back the fullback right behind him or a right wide receiver behind him and then they're going off tackle with their play they're trying to get Texas to shift their defense to the outside and go back inside on them well they shifted a little wrong there or moved a little too quickly it'll be first out of 15 same thing happened to Texas in their own territory had a first out out near midfield and they had a five yard penalty and now the Aggies are going to have five yards stepped off against them, taking it back to midfield. First down, 15. There's four games now that we've done with the Aggies this year. Two of those games, Jim, they had over 100 yards and penalties in the first half. One against Alabama, which we thought, and even they thought that they could have won the ball game had an been for those offensive penalties, and then against SMU. Jay Walker, the man to the left now. Nelson goes in motion to the right. And on first and 15, Murray is harassed but runs out of the pocket. And this fella can run, and boy, is he put down. That was Britt Hager, the middle linebacker, number 60, chasing him and putting him down. After a gain of only a yard, second down and 14. Jim Hager ends up, ends up chasing Murray here, but watch on both sides. The protection breaks down on both sides of the scrimmage. Matt Wilson came out to the outside to block an end, and then here comes Hager on the backside to make the tackle for no gain. Rod Harris comes in. They take out the back Keith Woodside. So there are three wide receivers in there now on second down and 15. And in they've ten. got them all stacked. And now Murray is mad because when he comes up, he sees something that he doesn't think is right for that formation and has to call a valuable timeout. 7-18 to go just in the first quarter. No threats yet. No scores yet here at Kyle Field. There's a new truck on the road. It's called Comanche. It's built by Jeep. It's worth a look. Now there are special factory-to-dealer incentives on selected Jeep vehicles and Eagle. Wherever you find pros in action, you'll find the Canon AE-1 program in action. The AE-1 program, so advanced in the hands of a pro photographer, it captures the winning shots. And so simple. It helps anyone shoot like a pro. The Canon AE-1 program. So advanced, it's simple. Tuesday, join ESPN for a colossal college basketball showdown. Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers meet Digger Phelps and his Fighting Irish. Live Tuesday. In the game for the Cotton Bowl, second down 15 for the Aggies. Murray being chased. Murray gets the ball away, and it's a good thing that was not intercepted. 
intended for Nelson over at the 41 yard line but there was double coverage there as Earl Jeffries a nickel back was the man in front of the ball and it had been a little bit less steam on the ball or a little bit higher and I think Jeffries would have had a touchdown all right here comes Nelson downfield now Jim now watch it they're, they're picking him up short and long they're not worrying about him short. the ball is there the problem was that's Jeffries number one that came in the game but the problem is that Murray never had a chance to set to throw the football now to third down and 15 to go both wide receivers are two wide receivers to the left and one to the right. Aggie's showing us a lot of different passing formations and Murray again under pressure and throws and the ball is off the hands of the intended receiver Nelson and almost picked off by Longhorn and now the Aggies will have to kick the ball back to the Longhorns of Texas and on comes Todd Schantz for his first kick. You give all the credit that time to that defensive line because you take a look at this defensive line and I'm talking about moving steel hammer is going to be in there number 77 they're just forcing Murray out of the pocket and when that happens Llewellyn number 93 was there also shots kicks a very poor kick away and it was taken by the up man and that is Eric Metcalf son of Terry Metcalf and the ball will be down at the 23 yard line 658 to go thus far a battle of defenses Saturday night we've got a short night tonight Paul and I'll get up early in the morning or as a matter of fact start our journey tonight and wind up in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where Oklahoma is going to the Orange Bowl and Oklahoma State to the Gator Bowl, and where they're wondering whether Pat Jones is going to Pittsburgh. But we'll be there at 7.30 Eastern time. Those of you along the Eastern Seaboard, except New York, will watch West Virginia and Syracuse. When Asbury's replaced Daryl Austin, who's got that bad foot at left cornerback for the Aggies. First down, Longhorn. Second man... And that is Hunter being dragged down by Ron Sadler. Rod Sadler, the junior, out of Decatur, Georgia. They got a good front three, this Aggie football team, and they're all young. And they all work so well together. Muller and O'Brien and Sadler, when you see the back have to move back in the backfield instead of going directly at the hole, that was because of Sammy O'Brien got penetration over the center. There's a battle in the, front, in the, in the middle there between O'Brien and Shelton. Only two seniors on the Aggie starting defensive unit. Well, Hunter is sure getting his chance to run the ball tonight, and Sammy O'Brien is making his presence known in the battle with Gene Shilton, the center of Texas. Jim, on that play there, Sammy O'Brien, watch what he does now with Chilton. He's going to set him up straight up in the air like that. He's getting double teamed by Chester. Now watch what happens. He gets away from Chilton, gets away from Chester, gets back in and makes the play. That's sensational. Third down and eight to go. Texas, no score. Ball at their own 25. But that was the catalyst for the Longhorns' comeback in the last half of the season. Dropping straight back, he rarely does that. Fires, the ball is picked off. That is Johnny Holland, the All-American. And the linebacker has the first turnover of the game, and the ball is inside the 20-yard line. Johnny Holland, all he did was read the quarterback's eyes because Stafford, when he dropped straight back, the reason why I told you, they like to roll him out. Because when he dropped straight back, all the linebacker did was stand there and take a look at his eyes. Now watch where Stafford's looking. He's looking at the man all the way, throws, Johnny Holland gets in front, makes the interception, and now Texas A&M has the ball inside the 20. And William Harris, the tight end, is the man who came up empty as Holland cut in front of him. First good field position of the night for either team with 54 seconds to go in the first quarter. And there is no score, of course. Well, when you see this thing again, Jim, take a look at Stafford. He is looking at his tight end the entire way. When he does that, it was William Harris, 95. Holland just steps in. And Sadler said, how do you do it? Knock Stafford down. I'm called on the field. The officials are talking with the sideline and about what I know not. Apparently a clock problem. Our clock shows 54 seconds to go. But something is going awry with the clock, and that's why they've taken this time out. Well, Paul, we have seen nothing of a defense tonight. We've seen a good rush by the Texas defense, and we've seen containment by the Aggie defense. And now we've seen the first turnover that could set up a score. And the man that made it all possible is Johnny Holland. You know, the defense, we talked about an improved football team defensively this team Texas A&M they have a tremendous amount of confidence in the three down people Sammy O'Brien Muller and, and Sadler because they know that these those three guys are going to get some heat on some players 
Now we've got Johnson in the backfield offensively, and we got Vic in the backfield offensively. They're talking upstairs, trying to get the clock problem settled. Rob Bernstein has gone in. He is a tight end and a good pass catcher for Texas A&M. He will wear the number 29. And that's the situation. No score, 54 seconds to go. Well, while they take this time out, why don't we take a time out? It's Thanksgiving Day. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. This is the race for the Cotton Bowl, and it's up for grabs still. Talk to me, Bruce. I have been... We're not a company, but we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence. Become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. We're the armed forces. It's a great place to start. Christmas is just around the bend, bringing gifts from True Value Hardware Stores. Like the Dustbuster Plus, Black & Decker's most powerful cordless vacuum, complete with attachments. Then peel and julienne fruits or vegetables with this Daisy Electric Stripper. And work anywhere in your kitchen with these Sunbeam cordless appliances. Get the freedom... Long time. Walker and Nelson both wide to the right. And Harry Johnson, the freshman running back, did not set up properly, but they got time to get the playoff. On second, oh, he's lost the football, and Texas has it back. Now it is still up for grabs, and Texas gets it back a second time. Dulavon looks like number 39. Johnson fumbled it, had a chance to get it back. Allard comes out with it, although I thought I saw Dulavon get on it first. In any event, it belongs to Texas. Didn't Dulavon have the first shot at it? All right, here's the, the toss for Murray. Just never gets there, Jim. Here's the toss in the backfield, and that's to Johnson. He misses the ball. There's Chris Dulabon. The ball hits him in the hands. Murray goes for the ball. Dulabon went after it again, but Ty Allard, number 48, is the man that comes up with it. Turnovers for Texas, 23. Lost 28, minus 5. AM is plus three, and the clock shows 4.57 to go now. We were saying 57 seconds. There was a lot of problems with that clock. Now looking to get outside is Hunter. That's one on one right there. Fine play by number 30, the right cornerback, Alex Morris, a freshman out of Arlington, Texas. But he gets the ball out to the 33-yard line, second down and eight. And Paul, we were saying 57 seconds to go. Is now four and a half minutes to go, so there was a big problem with that clock. All right, and another thing too, when you watch when you watch that last play with Hunter, and this is what's happening, they, they're not able to run Texas. They're not able to run the ball up into the middle of the field against Texas A&M, and it's taken too long to get to the outside. Stafford being pursued, coming over to throw, gets the ball up in the air, and the closest man to it was Will Cox, and the next closest man to it was James Flowers. Both of those are Aggie men. It was Kelm who was pressuring Stafford, the inside linebacker, number 65. And now it is third down and eight to go in the scoreless first quarter. And I can promise you Stafford just threw the ball away. Here it comes. Domingo Bryant, number six, is there. They're pursuing from the outside. Kelm, you're going to see him come into the picture. But Domingo Bryant hits him, but the ball was thrown downfield. And what did in direction? I, I'm the one that told you it was Kelm. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my fault. Third down and eight. And straight ahead, looking for the first down. The first time he's carried the ball is Darren North. And he's got more than enough. As he's dragged down by Alex Morris. First time Darren Norris, the freshman fullback, has carried the ball tonight. And he gets more than enough. Now, I made a statement that they have not, Texas, they've not been able to run the ball up the middle, Jim. And here's the draw play. Now, watch what happens with the draw. Now, they're looking pass rush, first of all. The linemen let the, the defensive line take their splits and go outside. And when that happens, here comes Norris up the middle. Morris, number 30, comes in and makes the tackle. But they're at the 40-yard line. Hayes goes wide to the left. Gay is to the right. Same two backs in there, Norris and Hunter. We've not seen any other in the Texas backfield. And this is Hunter carrying the ball, and he gets up the middle. Dragged down by Johnny Holland. 
along with Kip Corrington, the free safety. A reminder again, Darrell Austin, they found out that a senior, this senior left cornerback had ankle problems, then a broken foot. He started tonight's game, but Wayne Asbury has taken over at the left corner for him, number 16. Here's Johnny Holland. Now let's just take a look at Johnny. He's looking at the play. He sees the cross action. Now he come back, comes back to make the play. This is an eight-yard gain by Hunter, but at least Johnny Holland got to the play late. Ball at the 33, second down two, no score, three minutes to go, first quarter. Stafford and Hunter's got no place to go. It's going to be third down and short. Lots of folks there to stack him up, led by Todd Howard, 73, the outside linebacker on that side. And Muller and Holland. In with the play comes Tim McRae, a tight end. It is third down and about two. On the 33, Edwin Simmons makes his first appearance. You won't be able to miss him. He's big, 6'4", 230, and he does not have the football. Stafford does and throws the ball out there, and it is caught and knocked out of bounds as Hunter out of the backfield. It'll be first down and goal to go at the five as everybody went for except Stafford, who found Hunter loose along the sidelines. Jim, they had three people in the backfield, and everybody's worried about Edward Simmons. There, there's the fake. Stafford comes to the outside. Now, look, you're going to see two people in line right there. When that ball is thrown up in the air, Harris, the tight end, almost knocked the ball away from Hunter. The ball was being thrown to Hunter and not to Harris. And the Aggies have called timeout again. That is their second in this, the first quarter. Moments ago, Johnny Holland intercepted a pass. It was first down Aggies at the Texas 19, but then Johnson fumbled the ball, and the Longhorns have put together a fine drive, and they're now first and goal to go at the A&M four-yard line. Saturday night, Paul and I will be, most of you will see Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, two bowl-bound teams starting at 7.30 Eastern time, and some of you along the East Coast We'll see West Virginia and Syracuse. We're splitting it up for the first time ever on ESPN. Jackie Sherrill, boy, what a turnaround this has been for him. The elation of first down at the 19, the dejection of Texas first down at the 4. And, of course, on the other side of the field, the Longhorns and their fans have had the same kinds of ups and downs. Two and turnovers, one apiece. And I don't think. What? The Texas will throw the ball down here. I don't think so either, but Edwin Simmons has come in, and just his size prevented everybody from taking a look at mining their own store because they all went for Simmons and left Hunter all by himself. And as you said, Paul, two men were out there that could have caught the ball. Not much there for Hunter. And Larry Kelm is the man who puts him down. So it is second down. Aggies very tough here. They may run four times, or likely three times, and then try a field goal if they must. But it's tough to run against the Aggies down here. Domingo Bryant is coming back in. Morris is coming back in. In the defensive backfield, they're taking out Basil Jackson, a reserve linebacker, and Dana Batiste. Thinking perhaps Texas will put it up. Simmons with the ball for the first time. Simmons gets down to about the two and a half yard line and is stopped there. And again, it is Corrington, the free safety coming up, number 10. He's a College Station player raised here, went to school here, that we have seen save A&M against SMU and Arkansas in the late going. Look at Edwin Simmons. Now he's 6'4", 235 pounds of leg drive, but they close fast. But when they close that time, Kelm, number 65, was one of the men there. I go uh, right back to, to Edwin again. Third down from the two. Simmons with the ball, and did he get in or no. not? They say no. Decision time for Akers. It is fourth down, and inches to go only. Take the three, or figure your big man Simmons can take it in. That's, I think that's 53 Jackson. Here comes Simmons. The same play again right up the middle. And just look at them. They stuff him right at the goal line. Here they come again. This from the side. And he does not score. You can see it. Right there he is stopped. Never makes it to the goal line. They're going. This is going on fourth down. Simmons again. No, and no. He does not get it. He is stood up. 
And that is James Flowers, a cornerback, that hit him low. Flowers was there, Jim. But there had to be a great surge in the middle of the line. And I got to think it's got to be Sammy O'Brien. Muller, his Sadler ends up on the play. And it's a big gamble. But just when you take a look at the middle, they just took Chilton, the center, and he comes flying back. Watch here. There's just no place to go. They're coming in up over the top. But underneath, the thing was jammed by Sammy O'Brien, number 90, and there was just no place for Edwin Simmons to go. There they come again. Look at up in the middle of the pile. Muller was there. That team's fighting, man. Edwin Simmons, 234 pounds, carrying the ball three times and does not get it. Anthony Tony takes it out to about the five and is knocked back by Texas's defense. Led by Mike January. They were concerned about Mike, a backup linebacker, playing tonight because of a calf injury, but he was certainly in on that tackle, number 28. And we're running down to the end of the first quarter. First quarter is over. And Texas A&M has had the goal line stand. Texas and Texas A&M scored us it after one. There's a new truck on the road. It's called Comanche. It's built by Jeep. It's worth a look. It's Sears' biggest automotive sale of the year. Hundreds of thousands of batteries, thousands upon thousands of shocks, and they're all on sale. Save $20 on a Sears diehard battery, only $49.99, our lowest price of the season. And save 40% on Sears heavy-duty shocks, now $5.99 each. So install some confidence at Sears today. Quantities aren't limited, but time is. There's more for your life at Sears. I'm going to give you a choice. A fabulous dinner with me or a million dollars. Of course, this isn't just my generosity. It's part of Canada Dry's million dollar sweepstakes. I adore Canada Dry ginger ale. It's deliciously less sweet. And who wants to be sweet anyway? So have a Canada Dry Ginger Ale while you're mulling over this momentous decision. Me, or a million dollars. For details, see the Canada Dry Joan Cullen sweepstakes display in supermarkets. That's the Aggies yell leader, and he's telling us folks to put it on Texas A&M Sway. That is not a wave, that's a sway. Watch that long enough, and you go for the seasick field. <laughs> Second down as we go back to the field. Aggies with the football. Tony carrying the ball. Flag down on the play. Check that. That's Roger Vick. When they stand up to do that swing and sway, five yards against Texas, they stand up right in front of Paul and me, and it's a little difficult to see. First quarter was a standoff on the scoreboard. Yeah, but just take a look at the yardies. And that, that was that long drive by the University of Texas. They just moved the ball down the field and didn't score. Texas A&M had the ball, got it on the turnover, and gave it right back to Texas. They really not had the ball long enough to do anything with it. Oh, Bevo. Hello, Bevo. Give us your Bevo. Thank you. Hello, Bevo. Second down from the 10-yard line and two yards to go. A&M. Roger Vick, the one back set there. That is Vic, and he has got, well, I think he's got the two yards. Hanging on to him there was James McKinney, the defensive end, number 87. He's got to get over the 12-yard line to have that first down. Now, check that, Paul. I'm in error. That's Thomas Aldridge, 97, not McKinney, 87. That's Ty Allert there, number 48. Outstanding linebacker, 11 sacks on the year. He's only second in total tackles as they're coming out for measurement, but he has 86 solo tackles before tonight, and that is 10 more than his closest competitor. 
Let's see whether or not the Aggies have a first down. It looks like they do by that much. We're at Kyle Field, and high over Kyle Field is a Goodyear blip. America up from Houston, Texas. All they do is follow 45 North, and they'd be here at the controls. Dr. Don McDuff from Anson, Texas, and guess where he went to school? University of Texas. We may just see the bench from the blimp. The good, Aggie the score will allow him to lose the blimp. <laughs> first down. Quick pitch back. Keith Woodside carrying the ball for the first time outside. He's got the first down across the 30-yard line. Woodside bumped after he gets to the 35-yard line by Eric Jeffries. Woodside had an outstanding game against SMU, was used sparingly against Arkansas, and they just unveiled him tonight. Now just look at the left-hand side of the line. They get the excellent block, and Wiley, number 58, super block. Really didn't hit anybody, just got in the way of the defensive back. And here comes Woodside, one shoe missing. Picks up the first down. Jeffries puts him down, but they're at the 30, almost the 38-yard line. Early second quarter, no score. Roger Vick this time. Vick. Again, Peavy misses the tackle, and he runs through the tackle of Dulabon. First down across midfield at the 48-yard line of Texas. For all of you people that are going Christmas shopping, you go into stores with revolving doors, well, watch Peavy. <laughs> After Vic hits him, you're going to see a revolving door. Here he comes. There he goes around the corner. Vic gets back into the play, gets downfield. That's excellent. Vic. Three carries, 17 yards, first down the Aggies. And this time, Woodside is put down on a fine play by James McKinney. McKinney, who grew up in Austin, Texas, home of the University of Texas. And that's a loss on the play of two yards, second down and 12 from midfield. For those of you who do not know, as Fred Akers encourages his team the winner will go to the cotton bowl the loser to the blue bonnet bowl will keep reminding for those who may be joining us walker and nelson stacked as wide receivers at the top of your screen as murray is under a deep rush and down he goes gee what a rush was put on there by the blitzing linebacker january the man we said they were afraid would not play tonight because of a calf injury and that takes the ball back inside the 40 and now it is third and a ton now january normally is an outside linebacker you watch him slide into the inside there was just no one there to pick him up the backs left the backfield they did not look in the middle January number 28 comes up the middle and makes the tackle. And remember, against Baylor last week and in other recent games, Texas has been blitzing more than usual. And they've been blitzing a lot tonight. It is third down and 24 from the 38-yard line. And here's Murray dumping it out here, and the ball is knocked away. Trying to get the ball out to Woodside at about the 28-yard line. Check that to Roger Vick at the 28-yard line. And I believe McKinney is the guy that got his hand on the ball, number 87. In any event, it is fourth down and 24. This offensive line leaves just a little bit too soon on, on this screen. Now, you watch Dawson, 64, slide to the outside. McKinney just gets his hands up. They never got to him. And so now Todd Schantz to kick the ball away. High, good hang time. No fair catch called for yet. And now, the ball, I think, went off Metcalf, and let's see who gets it. Metcalf did not call for a fair catch. A big mistake. A big mistake for the freshman out of Arlington, Virginia. And down there quickly is Lane Polochek, a reserve nose guard. And another turnover, this time at the 12. Polacek is a man that, that, that gets it. I don't understand what Metcalf was doing here. Now watch. First of all, there's no fair catch. This ball is way up in the air. He knows he doesn't have time. And then he fights the ball. Instead of getting underneath the ball, Metcalf had a chance at it. But the ball comes out. Polacek gets the ball. It is now Texas A&M's ball. First down. Another big break for the Aggies. Yep, man, and that is Anthony Tony. Does not get much. You can see Peavy there, Hager there. And it is second down. Tom on inside the 10. Excuse me, on the beginning of the last drive before the punt, they had tremendous success running outside on Texas because they're getting their guards out and down the field. You've got a feeling they've got to go back wide to the outside. Nelson and Walker, the wide receivers are both to the right. On second down from the nine-yard line, 
Murray is hit as he throws the ball, and the ball is not caught by Jeff Nelson. Jeffries to cover, but the ball is incomplete at the five, and it is third down from the nine. Jeff Nelson went into the middle. Jimmy was going to take Jeffries inside and then come on back out to the outside. And when he did that, he slipped and fell, got back up and almost made the catch. That's why he's shaking his head. He got in there. The ground was gone, but he got back up. Kevin Murray, who leads the conference in passing, is two of seven for 15 yards. Third down in the eight-yard line. Scoreless ball game. Murray back to throw again. Murray throws out here for the catch, and it is good, and touchdown Jeff Nelson. First score of the Aggies. Nine-yard touchdown pass. Jim, this is about as pretty a pickoff as, you, as you're ever going to see with Shea Walker. You're going to watch. Shea Walker might come underneath in your picture. You don't see him there. But they picked off Jeffries, and there's Nelson. Jeffries had to go around in order to get there. Franklin back in to have the extra point. The Aggies are on the scoreboard first in this race for the Cotton Club and the Cotton Bowl on January 1st. All right, here comes the play. You see Murray driving back. Great protection. Now you can see Shea on one side, Shea Walker on one side, and then Nelson there. Jeffries couldn't get there. Nelson goes for the ball. Offensive line doing the job. Just take a look at Doug Williams, 75. He's sitting in there, no problem at all. 11.20 to go in the half, 7 0 A&M. Today, the Soviet Union has officially entered professional boxing. Drago is the most perfectly. Piano is brought to you by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. By Nikon, we take the world's greatest pictures. And by Volvo, a car you can believe in. On the field, the legendary 12th man in the form of 11 men who form the 12th man kickoff team, normally only at home. Scott Slater will kick it off, and everybody else, none of whom has a scholarship, will all race down and try to stop either Kevin Nelson or Eric Metcalf on the return. Now, there have been three turnovers, and the third one paid off for the Aggies and turned the tables for the moment on the Longhorns. 7 0 Texas AM. After Metcalf, the freshman tried to field the punt and fumbled the ball at the 12. Later to kick off. Flag is down. Nelson takes the ball. Aggies could have been offside. Nelson goes down at the 15-yard line, but I think they'll have to kick it again. Although they're coming out on the field, there is a flag down, and there's no call, and Slater's going back to kick it again. But the Texas offensive team is out on the field. Let's see. Offside. A&M. And right. now, well, I think they'll all come back out again. Here's Wurzbach, Jim. <laughs> he's, he's a little stranger than fiction. Mark Wurzbach. Watch this. Number 21. They just go like crazy, and they find the ball. Get out of my way, because I got some work I got to do right here. And then wham, they're in play. I tell you what, I saw the bonfire being lit last night on local Texas A&M television, Offside. and they talked about the fact they're going to do this Free again. Kick. They talked about the fact that we always isolated on Dennis Mudd and Wurzbach was asked why they didn't isolate on him he said they can't pronounce my name well we isolated on him we can pronounce his name and here's the scoring drive it has paid off after that uh, turnover I think well, if you'd have asked the 12th man these guys would have been human torches for the bonfire <laughs> by the way at halftime we have the bonfire for you That'll be our Texas A&M segment. We'll also have the Texas Marching Band and our salute to the Longhorns who are down from Austin, Texas, looking for the Cotton Bowl. Right, here they come again. Jackie Sherrill sends them out. They'll kick off from the 35-yard line. Look at this. This is not this madness. The 11 men on the 12th men squad also take the field waving those towels, and they're waving them right now, all aside from the kicker. They're whooping it up. Now that's just for the 12th man, the towel. That's right. all the people that are waving. This team right here. All right, Nelson Metcalf now move out to about the six yard line. Anticipating a much shorter kick. 11.15 to go in the half. 
Then it gets a pretty good kick there. Driving Nelson all the back. It goes into the end zone and out of the end zone. <laughs> a following win there, and they'll bring the ball out to the 20. But Texas does pick up five yards on the penalty in that they would have had to start at the 15 had there not been a penalty. So now Brett Stafford will bring his people out and try to get something going. And you can see that Metcalf is staying in the game. As we told you, Murray leads the conference, but was two of seven before he threw that touchdown pass. Three of eight, 25 yards tonight. Remember we told you Metcalf is in. He can give them some outside speed, number two. And they give the ball to Metcalf right there. And that's Johnny Holland. That's got Metcalf, and down he goes. And that is a loss on the play of about four yards back to the 16-yard line. This is the pursuit of Johnny Holland. He said, what did he say? The sandwich is on the field, which so wouldn't want to take it. Here comes Holland. He's going to take the sandwich. Watch this. Metcalf, he makes a mistake. He slows down. You've got to give credit to number 16, Asbury, who was out there on the outside. He's the man that made Metcalf slow down. When he did, Holland made the play. There is the A&M. Aggies mascot, Reveille. They call it an American copy dog. Second down, Stafford on the handoff. And this is fumble. all fumble by Norris. And is picked up by the Aggies again. Is that Poynton again? The local boy who keeps making good every time we turn our cameras on him. The firm turnover for Texas. Don't make a mistake in a game like this. There's Kelm and there's Holland. Here it comes. Johnny Holland hits, rips the ball out. The ball goes downfield. Corrington, number 10, is going to fall on it. Asbury was also with him. Number 16, either one of them could have had it. Winner goes to the Cotton Bowl, but mistakes like this can keep you out of the Cotton Bowl. Murray on the handoff, and straight ahead goes Roger Vick and gets inside the 30-yard line. And you can see Rocky Reed on top, the senior linebacker, or I should say defensive lineman out of Houston. Takes the ball inside the 30-yard line, nearly to the 28-yard line. Second down and about seven to go. He's still got 10 minutes to go in this first half. It is 7-0, the Aggies. And they're trying to add to it. Roger Vick again. Caught in the backfield. Fine defensive play there by Ty Allard. They're all American possibility. Back to the 32 it goes, and it is third down and 10. Ty Allard makes the play, Jim. They're doing that lineup again where they use Webb as the tight end on the outside, along with Johnson, who is the back. Now, Webb does not come back to the inside and get Ty Allard. That was the problem. He's split out. He's in a slot position, but he's got to make that crack back to the inside. If they do that, it gives the back time to get to the outside. Third down and long with Nelson swinging out of the backfield. And Murray looking and Murray throwing, and there's the catch. But that's not good enough for a first down. Nelson makes yet another catch inside the 25-yard line. But it may give them some options. But I do believe that they're going to bring on their field goal kicker. This will be a 42 yards. Remember against SMU, 48 yards. And Eric Franklin won the game with that 1917. But he is erratic. He is not in the class of Jeff Ward of Texas. But he can step up in class with this 42-yarder. From 42 yards out, it is high enough, it is long enough, and it is no good. It is off to one side. And again, they've dodged the bullet. One turnover out of three. The Aggies have scored. The other two, the Longhorns have escaped. 8.46 to go as Franklin comes off the field. Franklin actually thinks he makes this. Now watch his reaction afterward. The ball is up high. It's up over the top of the goalpost. Now watch Franklin. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I got it. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's new McDLT could be the best tasting lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. Happy Thanksgiving to you all from Paul McGuire and yours truly Jim Simpson and all of the ESPN crew. 7 nothing, the Aggies. Second quarter, 8.46 to go. First down, Texas at the 25. 
And running with the ball is Edwin Simmons. And Edwin Simmons does not get much, maybe a yard or two. Sadler and Johnny Holland in on the stop. And in the backfield, Peter Pope. Texas has lost Jerome Johnson. They're back up to Darren Norris out with a knee. So Peter Pope is in there now replacing Norris. Chilton to Sammy O'Brien. Let's take a look at what happens. Here's Chilton. He's blocked. But he is getting double teamed by Chester. They're double teaming Sammy O'Brien. They get him out of there. But the linebackers are stepping up and helping out. Second down and about eight. Baffert, here's Edwin Simmons looking for running room and does not get that much. Holland is at the end of the line there. You can see O'Brien there, along with number 73, Todd Howard. And it'll be third down and nearly five to go from just over the 35-yard line. Jim, we showed you children blocking double team Sammy O'Brien. Even though he's not in the play and they're double teaming him, Sammy O'Brien's doing his job because that's going to free a linebacker to make the play. Everett Gay wide to the right. Third down and nearly five. Stafford back to throw. Stafford being pressured, going the wrong way. Gets the ball off, and it is caught. No, it is not caught at the 31-yard line. That was Everett Gay making a dive for it. Would not have been a first down in any event. And again, the Aggies have held. And again, Telchik is coming on to punt the ball away. Jim Sadler and, and Roper are all chasing him. Now, Muller gets pushed away. Here comes Sadler after him. And a Roper is going to come into picture on the top side right there. And when that happens, and you're running for your life, man, you're looking for some help. And he didn't get any. Telchik, a fine kicker to kick the ball away to Jimmy Hawkins, who's a rather good kick returner. Ball is hanging there. Hawkins does not call for the fair catch at the 25-yard line and has very little way to go, does he? Gets across the 30, back to about the 32. 7-17 to go. In the second quarter, 7 nothing, the Aggies in the race for the Cotton Bowl. I swear we've been through everything there is. Can't imagine anything the two of us can do. Through the years, you've never let me down. Volvo, the car built to get you through the years. And I'm so glad I stayed. Right here with you through the years. Where you going, it's Nick alone. This is it, opening night. Brian, party of two. You're on your way to the top. Hey, it was just great. No other beer is brewed and aged like exceptionally smooth Michelob. Table for two. Oh, that'll be about 45 minutes. <laughs> <sighs> we did it. Where you're going, it's Michelob. And old Skeets whooped that hawk and made him fly him back over and put him back in that yard. <laughs> For college football, former Mississippi State lineman Jerry Clower. When I played football at Mississippi State, little did I know I'd go from this uniform to this uniform. But thanks mainly to my football scholarship, I got an education that will be valuable to me all of my life. College football. It's doing a lot of good. <laughs> that, that's the Aggies version of Bevo and what he's going to look like after tonight. <laughs> this is a fun game to do. Murray back to throw on first down. Had the toe for the moment. Lost the ball. And they're going to say, I believe, that I think he was down and the ground caused the fumble. I do not think that was a fumble. And apparently that is the way they're going to rule. The ball did not jump out from his hands. Watch this on replay. Now, Doug Williams is on the right of your screen. And he's blocking on McKinney. McKinney is going to come around. He's the first guy that I think that's going to get there. And then watch from the backside. That's where he gets hammered, he being Murray, Hager is the guy number 60 that hit him. A loss of 10 on the play, second down and 20. Tony, the lone setback, Murray back to throw from inside his own 15, gets the ball out there, and the ball is caught by Shea Walker. And Shea Walker is put down by Stephen Braggs, but that's almost enough for a first down. It'll be third down and a yard to go. The ball just over the 40-yard line. Now remember, Doug Williams is 300 pounds, and he is a good pass blocker. Here he is now, McKinney again. Watch Doug Williams. He's got McKinney eyeball, puts him face to face, gets him where he wants him. Doug McKinney's not going anywhere, man. Evan Murray now, 5 for 10, 49 yards and a touchdown. 
Third down a yard to go. 628 to go. Second quarter, 7-0 the Aggies. Going to full house backfield, and Tony has enough for the first down. Took quite a shot as he hit the line of scrimmage, which bounces forward to the 43, and that's the first down the Aggies. Richard Peavy came up. Peavy has been hitting a lot of people tonight, but he had been knocked away from a lot of people tonight, I guarantee you. Peavy's going to have a headache before this one's over with. Watch Tony and Peavy collide through the hole. Johnson, he's watching. That's Peavy on the ground. It hits him. Tony picks up the first down. Now the eye formation. Second man through does not get much, and that's a good play by Brian Espinosa. There on Keith Woodside. A loss on the play of a yard, and it is second down, 11. I don't think those those quick draws like they just ran there with Woodside is going to work against Texas for the simple reason that this team is not that all that big. Here's Texas A&M plays 20 rushing. They're doing it right about where they want to be. But what I'm saying that Texas defense Jim they are so quick they can get to the hole get around their blockers and get to the hole. Everybody lined up on the wrong side of the field. Nickel defense Eric Jeffries checks into Texas backfield and that's the third and final timeout taken by the Aggies in this first half with 5.36 to go. They've used them all. 7-0 Texas A&M leads Texas. And when we come back, it is second down 11, the Aggies. I'm Charles Schwab. Over one million investors who make their own investment decisions trade with us. Here are a few reasons why. Bill, I got some advice for you. It uh, won't help your golf game, but it'll do wonders for So find defensive playback. There's no sales pressure. Well, good, I hate sales calls and I like to save money. Schwab sounds like my kind of broker. For a free booklet on how you can save up to 76% on brokerage commissions, call 800-372-3000, toll free. That's 800-372-3000. Charles of the Bank America Company, member SIPC. Second at 11 from the 42-yard line for Texas A&M. On a night that we did not expect to be this pleasant, actually rather pleasant. And a wind, what wind there is about nine miles an hour, is behind the Aggie team at the moment. Murray, back to throw, looking for Shea Walker, almost intercepted, and that's a fine defensive play back there by Stephen Braggs, the cornerback, in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Braggs held his own against Shea Walker. They, land, they, they, they lined up all three wide receivers in tandem, Jim, and then they just broke off at different areas. And that time, Murray, watch how nice he... He's not worried about the rush. He doesn't worry about his offensive line. He already said that. He's got confidence. Now watch him step up and fire the ball. He's got a strong arm. Murray now 5 for 11. We're looking for 6 for 12 here because it's third down and about 11 to go. And throws, and there's a good catch there. And that's the first down. And that is Rod Harris, number 17. Takes the ball inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Jim, Randy Dobson, the right guard, what a great play he makes. He's going to pull out and pick up a linebacker in the line that gives Murray a chance to throw. You see Dawson there? He just pulls out, makes the block. Otherwise, Murray would have been down. They hit Harris downfield. No chance for Tillman to make the play. Harris gets the first down. And look at Murray. He wants to look. I want to see if it's a, it's a bad angle to look at it, but he loves it. Harris, a freshman out of Dallas, is now in motion to the left, but they give it back to their tailback in this situation. And nothing there for Keith Woodside. And that's another good play there by the Texas defense, James McKinney. And that is a loss of about four, second down and 14. From the 41-yard line, Woodside has carried four times for 20 yards, but of those 20 yards, most of that was on a single carry. Five minutes now left to go. There's a young Maggie. First one down there, once an Aggie, always an Aggie. And they can say the same thing up in Austin. Once you go to UT, always a long one. Murray on second and long. Boy, he waits till the last minute there, doesn't he? And throws out toward Woodside, and there may be interference charge against Dulabon, who is trying to cover Woodside. We'll see. I don't know if it was pass interference over there or holding. 
one of the two I think Dulabon is a guilty party Joe Thomas the referee will sort it out for us and you can see that Chris Dulabon is checking in and see what they're saying there and so is Woodside they were the two involved I do believe Paul well well they discussion. they ran a, a crossing pattern with Harris and whether that's called a pick or not I don't know it's Murray's happy it's it's holding I think it's going to be a holding call against Texas well I don't know if Kevin's hurt he, he's checking back in now we'll find out what it is <laughs> against Texas it might have been on the tight end Bernstein Jim number 29 as he's going across the field now the hands on the back that's Senegal hangs hands on the back and now the complaint now I, I don't know if it's that one or not or whether it's Dulabon earlier on Woodside outside of our picture and of course in college ball they'll just say what it is and will not give you the numbers as they do in professional football but this is a long discussion that couldn't have been a call on Tillman I, I really don't think so on that play there I think it happened much earlier illegal use of the hands five yards after the ball was stolen still second down Okay, that's what they're deciding whether it is while the ball is in the air and whether they get him the first down. It is after while the ball is being thrown, and the Acres says, "Okay, I'll take that." That only gives him five yards. It is now second down and nine. Four one to go in the half. Seven nothing. The Aggies. Three wide receivers to the left, including the back Woodside, who's coming out of the backfield. Murray looking, throwing underneath, intended for Woodside. That ball was on one hop to him. It's third down and nine. Both of these coaches are emotional. Tony Thompson has checked in as a wide receiver for the first time. Number 80. He is a freshman out of Houston. All right, Thompson. Now they've got four wide receivers in the game, Jim. Now they're taking they're, they're taking Thompson out. They've got three wide receivers, and uh, Bernstein's in the game. Number 29, the tight end. So Harris is one. Walker's one. And Nelson's won. Murray's in trouble. Murray's in trouble, and they're going to call that he has intentionally grounded the ball, and that's going to cost him a down and some yardage. Should have held on to the ball and gone down at midfield, but wanted to try to get away with it and has not gotten away with it. Densely grounding the ball, hands behind Ed will tell you it's also a loss of down. And Murray says, oh, I was throwing the ball. Watch who's in front of him, though. Number 29, Bernstein. There's going to be a receiver there when he goes to throw the ball away. 29, right there in front of him is Bernstein. You see him sitting there? Right to the right. He touches the ball. Now, as long as there's a receiver in the area, shouldn't be intentional grounding. Have illegal grounding. However. However. <laughs> the offense. Whatever. Fourth down. <laughs> now they'll kick it away. Todd Johnson. I bet you fair catch. I bet he fair catches or returns it. One of the two. But he cost them field position. Oh, look shanked. at this. Oh, look at this. Shanks shanked. But he's going to get a good roll out of it. Good roll out of it. Inside the 10. And it is downed by Morris inside the 15 yard line. Put it down at the 13. I can't believe it that night. Let's see, day after tomorrow. Well, yeah, we'll that's be in Oklahoma. You and I will be at Stillwater, Oklahoma, on its way to the Orange Bowl. Oklahoma State on its way to the Gator Bowl. And they're talking about Pat Jones possibly going to Pittsburgh. Paul and I'll be there. Up and down the East Coast, with the exception of New York City, you'll see our first split coverage. You will see West Virginia and Syracuse. And next week, well, just get out the hula hoops and skirts yeah. and all of that stuff, the poi and the... Oh, yeah. We'll be in Hawaii next week along with Brigham Young. I'm going to do that baby with a tan. <laughs> <laughs> First down from the 13-yard line, and the up back has no place to go. Arnie Norris in the ball game for the first time since he fumbled the ball away on a carry earlier in the game. Second down and 10. Jim, they're just jamming everything up. The linebackers, we talk about these two guys, Kalman Holland. Holland. But watch, there's Johnny Holland. He's in there. He makes the play. But the play is made up in the line of scrimmage, Jim, by the defensive lineman. Remember, only the left cornerback and the strong safety are seniors out of all those folks out there for the Aggies. Southwest Conference can look ahead to tough defense from them for a long while. Now here comes Edwin Simmons. 
And Edwin Simmons is trying to get the first down and does. Out of the 25-yard line. Edwin Simmons gets outside, gets the first down. Holland and Sadler chase him down at the 25. It looked like he just he just took his arm and threw Domingo Bryant away. Here comes Edwin Simmons. 6'4", 235. Great blocking in the line of scrimmage. The hole is there. Edwin's got his got the ball. Now watch watch Bryant. He just pushes him on the ground. That's Corrington, Corrington is there. Now is this a late hit out of bounds? Oh, Johnny Holland hit him in the head. Johnny Holland. They don't give you. I don't think getting credit for that. That's a half a tackle. But he has seven tackles so far. First down from the 25. Texas. They trail by seven. Stafford still with the ball. Stafford puts it out here, and the ball is caught. Fine play by the tight end, William Harris. Number 95. First down, Texas at the Texas 44. Jim, that was a perfect pass by Stafford. He threw it over a linebacker. All right, here's Chilton. And there's Sammy O'Brien. Now they're blocking with Jaton, number 61. Look at the double team there. Sammy O'Brien really doesn't get off the line of scrimmage, but that was an excellent pass by Stafford. Stafford now two for five, 49 yards. He's been intercepted once. Texas trails trying to get something going here late in the first half. And Edwin Simmons, look at Sadler stand him up and then get some help. But that's really Rob Sadler out of the Cater, Georgia, number 99. All 262 pounds of him that stood him up. All right, Gene Chilton. Now, he's trimmed down quite a bit. He's on Sammy O'Brien. And he, Sammy gets to one side. And then they send the back Norris up in the, the double team. Chilton's down from, what, 295 to 275? They used to call him, what, Coke Machine? <laughs> now they call him the Diet Coke Machine. I love it. <laughs> Second down, Simmons has gained 22 yards on seven carries, averaging a little bit better than three yards per carry. Second down and long, Stafford still has the football looking to throw. Throws it over and throws it over Simmons at the 50-yard line, and Simmons takes quite a pop from Johnny Holland after the ball went off his hands. It is third down and eight to go. 2.25 left in the first half. This is a play fake to Edwin Simmons, Jim, and watch what Johnny Holland does. As soon as he sees Simmons, that's his man. I'm staying with Edwin. He's going to take a look. The ball is up in the air. Holland hammers him. Holland weighs about 15 or 16 pounds less than the tailback, and he's a linebacker. That's right. Fred Akers went to Arkansas. Time called by Stafford. Looked like he was running out of time to call the play. 2.25 to go in the half. One touchdown pass, give the Aggies a 7 0 lead. Please go to the North End Zone's first aid station. You know, I'm the first guy to admit, I love members only jackets. They have such great style and fit. I only. And he's saying to the official, I. As your every move. It's a mighty car with a proud bearing, ferocious might, immense charm. The 740 Turbo is a wonder, tickling the leading edge of the state of the art. The Volvo 740, still one of the world's great cars, regardless of price. I'm Jeff Joseph. News affects the bottom line and your pocketbook. For commentary with a sense of history, a dash of humor, and an occasional curveball, catch my viewpoint weekday mornings on ESPN. At time, all of the day's news from Sports Center. The special feature: the bonfires lighted last night here in College Station Plus. Live, the University of Texas Longhorn Marching Band. That's our halftime for you. It is third down. The Aggie crowd comes alive, trying to kind of mess up Stafford with a snap count, and he's saying to the official, "I can't hear," but he knew that when he came in here. And the official. Joe Thomas is going to step in saying it is my timeout. And they'll re-huddle on third down. Akers tells him what to do, sends him back out. You know, this is all going to start all over again, and they can keep doing this. Sure, look at what Texas has been doing. 75% of their plays have been rushing the ball only 25 percent passing not that much difference a and m 64. now look at tonight you like that tonight much different well the crowd will go at it again third and long remember from the 45 of texas 
That was just hands on hips. They have not started the play clock, so they're giving them all the time in the world. Stafford is going to fall down, now get up, gets the ball out here, and throws it for his tight end who drops the ball when two men hit him. Johnny Holland and James Flowers hit William Harris, and he couldn't hold on to the ball, and they'll have to kick it away. All right, Stafford, when he, he went to throw a quick slant pass to the wide receiver, Jim, which is a split in on that side. He wasn't open. Now, here comes Harris. He's blocking at the line of scrimmage. He's really not in the pattern. But all of a sudden, he sees Stafford in trouble. Now he's waving his arm. The smart thing to do, the ball is almost there. He's waiting on the ball. And then goodbye, because he's going to get hammered by Flowers. Belchick on two punches averaged 52 yards. And this one drives Jimmy Hawkins back in near the sidelines. And it goes out of bounds inside the 10 at the 8. That won't hurt his average either, and that will put the Aggies in the hole inside their own 10-yard line. With 2.07 to go, Nelson on a 10-yard pass from Murray after a turnover when Eric Metcalf tried to field a punt with everybody down on him is the only score of this game. Aggies have turned the ball over once, and Texas has turned it over three times. One of them really hurt. That's the only touchdown. You're looking down from the blimp. And that is the Goodyear Blimp America up from Houston, Texas, just down the road. As we told you, Don McDuff, who's a graduate of Texas, is at the controls. He is from Anson. Appreciate the pictures. Captain and crew looks good. And that is Vic getting out almost for a first down. May have the first down at the 19-yard line. I wouldn't say that the officials are excited but as they went down to the field, they had fourth down up, and it was first down for A&M. They're not going to make any mistakes here. All right, just take a look at that's McGuire. That's McGuire number 61 getting the great block at the line of scrimmage. Okay, <laughs> but Button goes in there center. Flag is down. Vic, good play there, as you can see by Mark Petkovich, reserve middle linebacker. But a flag went down before the play got off. 1.48 to go, 7 nothing. Good halftime show, and remember, we don't want you to forget, and we won't let you forget. We keep reminding ourselves, this is for the Cotton Bowl. Ball, ball star, offense, first down. With the loser going to the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Now, we didn't think it, uh, against Arkansas that they would put the ball up, but you have to understand, there's a minute and 46 seconds in counting now. You can see the clock in there. Texas A&M, remember, will get the ball in the second half, so they just don't want to make a mistake here. I'll, I'll be surprised if they put it up. Well, they put Braggs out here one-on-one, -on -one, thinking that they would run, and they did run. McKinney takes care of Vic, and it is going to be second down and 13. Ball at the 16-yard line, and... The clock, for some reason, has stopped, and they've taken time out Texas. A&M has used all of theirs, but, of course, the Longhorns would like to get the ball back one more time with some time left on the clock. When it does run out, Sports Center will be on, and we'll have the lighting of the bonfire last night. Some of the old Texas Aggie heroes, some of the present Texas Aggie heroes, have the 55-foot bonfire. And, of course, we'll have the University of Texas marching band on also. Red Acres can't believe that they're saying that he could be in trouble, but people in Texas know more about that than Paul and I do, but this is what he's done in eight seasons. A couple of Southwestern <laughs> Conference titles, a couple of Cotton Bowls. I'll tell you something else about Acres. He has been to eight straight bowl games. That's not bad. I don't know what you have to do to keep a job, <laughs> and, 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 you know, especially, again, talk about the beginning. But this man did with this football team this year. I mean, they were picked on the bottom, not many people gave them a lot of hope, but Mr. Fred Akers, you've done a pretty good job with this football team. And all you have to do is leave him alone. <laughs> He'll be fine. Letter should be addressed to Mr. Paul McGuire. That's right. There's Nelson, and they keep the ball on the ground. Vic trying to get some running room, hold on to the ball. Dulabon's got him. And that's going to let the time run down even more. Well, Texas, they're going to take another timeout now. That's their last timeout. And you know they're going to run the ball again, then kick the ball away again. But the Longhorns may have a chance to get something going here. 
We have seen a lot of Texas A&M this year. We did the Alabama game, 105 yards and penalties there. They could have won that, and then they went on a winning streak. Northeast Louisiana, Tulsa, Texas Tech, Houston. Then they lost to Baylor, and for a while they thought that might be it in the conference, but they beat Rice. They were underdogs to SMU and beat them on the Franklin Field goal. They were underdogs to Arkansas and beat them. They rolled over TCU, and now they're here for the Cotton Bowl. Jim, that Baylor game, they just could not put the ball in the end zone. They were up and down the field against Baylor and couldn't get the thing in the end zone. Kevin Murray got hurt in the Arkansas State game last year as a sophomore after being the newcomer of the year the year before and was given a red shirt year medical red shirt and so he is now a sophomore which means he's got two more years six of 13 69 yards and the only score of the game situation is third down and 10 from the 19 yard line. Anthony Tony, well, that's a surprise. They pitched the ball to him, which could have been a mistake there, but he got away with it, and now they will kick it away. Yeah, that's they think he'd hand it to him instead bet. of pitch it to him. Walk it back and put it in his gut instead of throwing that ball away. They already had one fumble on a bad toss, and it is cold. And even in the situation like here, Jim, where the ball is at the 18-yard line, they're rushing on the field to kick the ball. I'd let, I'd even take the penalty here. It won't make that much difference. You're going to kick from the goal line uh, if you take a penalty. Take as much time off the clock as you can. Don't give them any. Now they're going to kick it. Jones. Now Metcalf. Wow. Drives him back. Would like to get in field goal range at least 25 seconds to go. Metcalf wants to get out of bounds, but not there. But he couldn't turn it upfield because the coverage by. The Aggies was good, so they've got the ball on a 33-yard line with 22 seconds to go and trailing 7-0. There's a situation where Metcalf didn't think Shantz was going to get the ball there. Now watch this. Watch Shantz. It's the ball, the center of the ball, and his head down the entire time, and that put up, uh, that's a beautiful kick, and he just drove it out of there. Well, Shantz, you know, they've been comparing him to his an all-Southwest conference punter, and they've been comparing Eric Franklin to Jeff Ward, who had another chance tonight, the all-Southwest conference Place kicker. Well, Johnson's passed the test. Franklin missed a 42-yard field goal. Well, 22 seconds, and you can watch the Texas Aggie bonfire and get warm by it. And get all the scores of today. All down the sidelines, that is Metcalf. And Metcalf is right down to about the 47-yard line with 14 seconds to go. And he got out of bounds, so that stopped it. Now, there's the man we're talking about. That is Jeff Ward. Metcalf just went down went down the sidelines. They just released him. They were worried about the wide receivers, and they didn't pay any attention to Metcalf. Here he comes out of the backfield. Now watch. When he clears right here, they just let him go. That's a linebacker. Metcalf, Calma's trying to get there. He can't. Uh-oh, drop the football. All kinds of flags go down. Clock shows no time left, and if it's an offensive foul, this half is over. If it's a defensive penalty, then they got to play. Samuel Bryant said it's offense. But the question, well, the clock was running. Here we go. Belongs to them. Therefore, they should declare this half over. At least according to the clock, the clock shows nothing left. But then again, they have had trouble with the clock before. 14 seconds when he started. Have a dead ball, full start, offense. There were two seconds on the clock. The fine. Okay. Wait, now I'll, I'll tell you they're arguing now because what you want to do is to, Flower says, I want the penalty. Here it comes. They two seconds on the clock. There's movement. The center picks his arm. The left guard is the man that moves, and that's Jaton. But that is the end. Of the, the clock is going to stop and start anyway. Well, look at Akers is not happy about this. Let's get in the locker room and talk this thing over. All right, one touchdown pass. Kevin Murray to Jeff Nelson. After a turnover, the only score of the game. They're in the race for the Cotton Bowl. They've got 30 more minutes to play. In the meantime, we've got a great halftime show coming up. 7-0, the Aggies at halftime. Most people know you can only buy a Curtis Mathis at a Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Center. They know delivery and installation are included. And there's a four-year limited...